again. Thank you everyone for being here and I'd like to welcome you as well. Can you hear me? A little closer? It's okay now? I'd like to begin by sharing a story. I'll try to be brief, like my younger sister says, to kiss, keep it simple, sweetie. But I have difficulty doing that because I can go on and on and on. But I'd, I'd really like to start by saying thank you to those that walk the streets of Central City with me on Friday uh, to tour some of the growing operations and two tour buses that came through on yesterday and visited uh, many of the spots and spaces and my garden, uh, the Sun Harvest Kitchen Garden. And I wanted to share with you the importance of connectedness and the spirit of this place that is New Orleans. And a lot of it centers around uh, stories and connecting through words and impressions. Yesterday after uh, the tour buses left, I stayed in my garden literally until about 7.30 p.m. planting mustard by streetlight. But prior to sundown, a gentleman uh, in the neighborhood walked up to me and he said, Miss Pam, tell me about all those people walking through the neighborhood. You know, some were white and some were black, but they really were nice. So <clears throat> I shared with him this, you know, uh, gathering, this Community Food Security Coalition Conference, and uh, the fact that about a thousand people are in town to, to learn more about what we're doing here around growing food. This gentleman uh, was recently homeless and periodically has stopped by my garden, you know, just to say thank you for what is being done. So one of the things I want to encourage you all to do, if you haven't already done it, Continue to just talk to people in New Orleans because we love to tell stories. We love to connect through stories. People in the restaurants, on the street. So I'll start with that. My theme, the theme of this talk, is the landscape as tapestry. I learned to sew when I was six years old. I started gardening at age eight. So a lot of the words that come to mind for me are associated with those experiences. One of the people that's influenced my work quite a bit is Wangari Maathai from Kenya with the Green Belt Movement. <laughs> Looking at the power of one to influence many to make change. So I would like to suggest here in New Orleans, we have this opportunity to weave a tapestry, and I'll call it the food tapestry. Because post-Katrina, as Lolis uh, so aptly said, those of us who were scattered about, we like to call it the Katrina diaspora, I was in Durham and then Chicago and was not able to return home for 18 months. But one of the things that uh, really, really, uh, as Lola said, connected us was how we thought about the food that we were missing. You could walk into a supermarket anywhere in this country and see some of the same food items, but there was something missing. So in a support group that I was a part of in Durham, we called ourselves Katrina Neighbors, and we would come together regularly around food, and people would uh, bring prepared dishes. One of the gentlemen, we say making groceries here, that's one of our vernacular terms, he said, Ms. Pam, I went to that supermarket and I bought uh, green peppers. And this lady was following me around the supermarket because she didn't understand why I had a basket full of green peppers. So she immediately said, why do you have all those green peppers? I said, because I'm gonna make stuffed bell pepper. So for us, the need to connect to our, our local cuisine, even spread out across the country, meant so much. For me, the journey home involved 
uh, working with food organizations in the communities where I landed. The Seeds Organization in Durham, and then after a year of living in Durham, I decided that it was time for me to go back to work. I was still not able to return home, so I ended up in Chicago and Milwaukee working for Growing Power and experienced my first real winter. And if that's not incentive for a Southern girl to come home, I tell you. So when you're out in Grant Park, across the street from Lake Michigan, uh, in icy rain, harvesting the last bit of collards and Swiss chard, uh, in the shadow of the magnificent mile, you're like, oh my God, I really love this work. I am so passionate about urban agriculture because I'm about to cry. I am so cold and disoriented. <laughs> so then I made the decision um, to share with Erica Allen, Will Allen's daughter, who I was working for in Chicago, that I believe I need to really focus on getting back to New Orleans because if I can do this here, I have to go home. I was one of those in the diaspora that swore that I was never returning, excuse me, to this hellhole uh, to live because the way that it was being projected, particularly to um, those of us that were away, you know, our city's covered in a toxic sludge and it's a frontier and oh my God. So I said, I'm too old, you know, to return to the frontier. Pioneering is not, you know, where I want to be right now. Um, that's it. But then Chicago helped me understand um, <laughs> that it was really necessary to uh, gain more talent and skill in urban agriculture and bring that home. So, in closing, this whole notion about a tapestry, you know, beautifully woven connectedness, design and patterns. Um, one of the visions that I have, flying into New Orleans for me is like no other place in the world. You know, I've worked in the Caribbean and flying home from the Caribbean, I mean, it's stunning. You know, the turquoise and the, the chain of islands looks like a necklace, it's beautiful. But flying into this mangled uh, uh, landscape of wetlands and swamps, it's nothing like it. I feel so excited and so blessed because there's a spirit here and I know you all are feeling it. There is a spirit here that grabs you and holds you. And even if you try to get away, and many of us have moved away, but I tell you what, we come back. We stay connected. But flying into New Orleans, I have a vision of seeing a tapestry of gardens, of food growing throughout this city, just cultivating beauty all over the place. And as you move around the city, and I know you have on your tours, you're seeing all sorts of little growing operations sprouting up. We have them. I estimate monthly new groups are, are literally sprouting up. So our challenge is to work with uh, this possibility of connecting. We have uh, estimated statistic of over 66,000 vacant and blighted properties post Hurricane Katrina. Prior to the storm, it was a little over 19,000. So therein lies an opportunity. As we're building new homes for people to return and those of us to have opportunities to again be rooted here, we also have so much vacant, blighted, and underutilized property that it would be so smart for us to find ways to partner with our municipal government to make it such that we have a strong urban agriculture infrastructure so that we can connect this food heritage city that is in an agricultural state and continue to not only lead our city, our region, our country, and the world 
in this global food justice movement. Thank you all so much.